And as we change to the new year, the folks at Blender Foundation have released a set of projects to look out for in 2023. As the new year poses an interesting and positive aura for everyone, there are 8 interesting projects that we may come to see as fully or partially implemented slash developed for the Blender community. And with the deprecation of OpenGL getting closer, Blender developers are already working on future-proofing the open source 3D tool. There's already been discussions about why this switch is essential, what has been achieved so far, and what needs to be done. The current status report seems to be growing with more updates and it's quite an interesting read for those who like to check it out. Alongside this, making Blender fully compatible with Metal Graphics API on macOS would be interesting. And in the recent release of Blender 3.4, we got an update for Apple Metal support for GPU rendering. So in the coming release, we might possibly be seeing a complete support for both Vulkan and Metal in Blender. And with the coming version of Blender 3.5 in view and slated for release sometime in March of 2023, the size real-time viewport compositing, which had its initial debut in Blender 3.0 Alpha, might be having an initial implementation to a master build of Blender. With more updates and nodes promised in subsequent release, the real-time compositor will usher in a new approach to final picture creation in Blender as artists would not need to wait for full render prior to compositing. The concept of real-time viewport compositing is an interesting one and the idea for this implementation is a fast and more interactive iteration of final image creation. Since the first introduction of EV in 2.8, the real-time renderer has proven to be a viable tool for all. From modeling to look devs all the way to final rendering of shots, EV itself have become a go-to render tool over the past years. And with a new set of technology and support now available, the dev team at Blender are poised to take advantage of these and bring some interesting new features to EV. From screen space global illumination to panoramic cameras, improved volume rendering, new shader execution models, grease pencil support, vertex displacement, and so on. And all of this polishes the idea that EV Next is definitely going to be a much more improved and enhanced version of the current EV version that we have right now. As Geometry Node continues to evolve, more artists and creators on all grounds are exploring the potential and groundworks that can be done with this easy to use procedural tool. Be it modeling or effects, Geometry Node has carved the spot for itself. And with the new procedural hair grooming that made its way to Blender 3.3 the LTS, the next logical step of new territories to explore are simulations. And last year November, an initial version of simulation nodes were available for testing with the 3.5 branch and this was well received by the community. And this year, the idea is to focus on simulation for physics and beyond. The plan for the system is to be interactive and experimental with simulations running on the viewport at their own clock. So sometime within the last quarter of 2022, we got two blogs and one dealt with the brush and asset drafting system while the other one dealt with the brush asset workflow. This seems to be something that is being taken serious as it might be coming to the next versions of Blender. This is currently available for anyone who would like to read it and the plan is to have a fully functional system for painting and sculpting. Although, based off the write-up for the asset drafting system, this is not only going to be for painting and sculpting as this would also compensate for having additional assets as it promises to be used for any asset in any editor. And if you take a look at the blog post that actually deals with the brush asset workflow, you'll notice a striking UI similarity with Modbox brush and catalog. Although from the mockup, we get to see that there is a search bar and a filter tool. And the whole idea for this is to make it accessible for anyone. There is also the option of this being visible and you can toggle this on and off. The brush asset and asset drafting system seems to be something that will be seen in the set of coming releases. And this might well redefine the idea of authoring and reusability of assets. Another interesting focus for the folks at Blender Foundation this year is accessibility and customization of tools. And this is where the Blender apps and extension platform comes in. Blender extension platform is said to be a community moderated platform for sharing, downloading and discovering add-ons, assets and so on. And this is planned for the year. We already looked at the coming Blender extension platform which would allow developers to freely share their work and add-ons. Although this platform will be completely free and no commercialization will happen on the platform. And for Blender apps, this in itself is coming and it will give Blender artists autonomy to create applications with Blender and distribute them, thus giving everyone an opportunity to make custom tools or build versions of Blender that they will love to work with however they choose. Animation seems to be taking a front row seat this time. And as we mentioned a few weeks back, animation updates are slated to be coming to Blender soon. We took a look at the Future of Animation blog, 
which outline the principles behind the upcoming animation revamp. And the plan for this from the blog is to get a kickstart from the beginning of 2023 to the end of 2025. The animation 2025 seems to be a solid project and the timing seems quite right. And with character animation making a list of projects to keep an eye on at the end of the year, this further reassures the fact that we may be getting some reasonable set of development as the year proceeds. And as every other aspect of Blender is getting an update, the developer's code review issue tracking and project management platform, which has been in use for about 20 years, would be having an update from the discontinued fabricator platform to Gitty. This is fully free and open source with functionality similar to GitHub. And speaking of a platform update, Blender 3.5 will be compatible with VFX Platform 2023. The VFX platform is a set of tools and library versions to be used as a common target platform for building software for the VFX industry. Its purpose is to minimize incompatibilities between different software packages, ease the support burden for integrated pipelines, and encourage further adoption of Linux by both studios and software vendors. So, this is more like it. For those who would like to go through and read up on some of the things that we've just talked about and take a look at some of the amazing projects to look out for for 2023 that will be coming over to Blender, then links to this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. And for those who would like to take a look at individual blogs that were also mentioned, I'm going to put links to this in the description as well. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.